Okay, before we start today's lesson, we are going to uh, have a reading of the law. We're going to read them from Exodus chapter 20, Ecclesiastes, uh, and in Revelation, okay? We're going to start Exodus 20 and 1. Go ahead and read it, brother. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water or that is in the water underneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and show a mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of, thy lo of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy man maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in, six, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them it. I don't, the he, the, well, excuse me. Heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Okay, thank you, brother. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Read those last two verses, 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. All righty, let's go to our last spot in the 22nd chapter of Revelation. It's Revelation 22, and we're going to read verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Thank you, brother. So look, we're gonna, uh, we have the reading of the law done in all Israel of God locations before the lesson starts. And uh, that is your key ingredient to keeping those of keeping those commandments to getting that salvation, okay? So uh, I want to start by saying to everyone here and watching online, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And I want to say welcome home here at Israel of God Bible Study Class where we teach the Bible by subject and title. My name is Brother James. Reading for us is Brother Carl. Okay, brothers and sisters, today's lesson title is a question today's title is a question and that question is this are the lost books and the apocrypha god inspired books that's the question are the lost books and apocrypha god inspired books we've done these lessons in the past and we see that People still uh, pick the books up. They still say they belong with the 66. And the thing is, everybody sitting in this room can write a book. But did God want your book with these 66 books? That's the question. I can write a book and quote Isaiah, Moses, and Jesus. But did God want my book in this Bible? But I can quote Isaiah, Moses, and Jesus, but the minute I tell you I ran from California to New York in one day, 
Now you now you going to question my book because I just told you something that wasn't true. OK, so we're going to look at this apocrypha today and we are trying to show you enough evidence so you can make your own decision on whether or not God inspired these books. OK, so let's start today's lesson uh, in Second Peter, chapter one. Second Peter, chapter one. Because for a person to validate a book or some books loaded with lies and say it belongs in the 66, I'm going to have to question that. OK, so now let's start in Second Peter and we're going to go to chapter one and just read one verse. Second Peter one and twenty one, my brother, Second Peter one and twenty one. Go ahead and read that. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men. Okay, so look. So when you see these prophets writing in this Bible, they didn't write of what a man told them or what they wanted to write themselves. Go ahead and read, brother. But it, but holy men of God. What kind of men? Holy men of God. Go ahead. Spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So we see right now that these guys were moved by the Holy Ghost to write what they wrote in this book. They didn't make it up themselves. Let's stay with Peter. Let's go into 1 Peter chapter 1. We see that holy men were moved and they wrote in this Bible. 1 Peter chapter 1, let's start at verse 3. 1 Peter 1 and verse 3. Go ahead and read. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. which according to his abundant mercies have begotten us again into a lively hope by, his res by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Okay, so now. Let's skip down to verse 6. Verse 6 and continue. Wherein, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Yes, go ahead. That the trial of, trial of your faith, being much more precious than, than the, of gold that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Uh-huh, go ahead, brother. Whom having not seen, ye love. Mm -hmm. And whom, so now ye see him not, ye believing. So it says, even though you haven't seen him, you love him. And you haven't, uh, and, and still in not seeing him, you believe in him. Go ahead and read. Ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Go ahead. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Mm -hmm. Of which salvation of the, oh, excuse me. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Go ahead. Searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them. Hold on. Which, I'm sorry. It says the spirit of Christ was in these brothers. So we see these were holy men who wrote. They were moved by the spirit of God. And we see right now it says the spirit of Christ was in these writers. Go ahead and read. Which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glory that shall follow. So when we can go in this Old Testament and read most of these writers writing about Jesus before he even came in the flesh. So they wrote it and it came to pass. And that made their writings true and it proves it was inspired by God. But with today's title being are the lost books and apocrypha God-inspired books? We're going to look at a few of them, and we're going to have to put that question on the table. So now let's go to see something what Paul said to see if he agrees with Peter. 2 Timothy 3. Let's see if Paul agrees with Peter so we can get us a second witness right here, okay? 2 Timothy chapter 3. We just want one verse. 2 Timothy 3 and 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verse 16. Go ahead and read it, brother. All scripture is given by interpretation of God. Uh -huh. Inspiration. Inspiration. Sorry, excuse me. All scripture is given by inspiration of God uh -huh. and is profitable for doctrine, mm -hmm. for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So Paul lets us know, just the same as Peter, these writers were inspired by God. Okay. So now let's go to Genesis chapter 2 because we're getting ready to put. Uh, 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 these lost books to the test right here. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis 2. And then when we finish, you can make up your own answer. 
You can make up your own decision. Genesis 2, my brother. One verse, verse 7. Genesis 2 and 7. Go ahead and read it. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Mm -hmm. And man became a living soul. So man became a living soul. Before that, he was a dead soul. Okay. So now, this is what Moses said. So now, let's go into 1 Corinthians 15 and see if somebody else can say that. 1 Corinthians 15, and we just want one verse right there. Verse 45. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 45. 1 Corinthians 15 and 45. Go ahead and read it. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul. Mm -hmm. The last Adam was made made a quickening spirit. Okay, so we see here uh, that it is written, because Moses wrote it, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. So we got two places in this Bible that said Adam was a living soul. Okay? So now, let's go into the Apocrypha in 2nd Esdras, chapter 3. 2nd Esdras, chapter 3, and we're going to read verses 3 and 4. Go ahead and read it, brother. And my spirit was sore moved, mm -hmm. so that I began to speak words full of fear to the Most High. Go ahead. And said, O Lord, who bears rule? Mm -hmm. Thou speak, at, speakest at the beginning when thou didst plant the earth, mm -hmm. and that thyself alone command, and commanded the people. Commandest the people. Go ahead. And gave a body unto Adam without soul. Wait a minute. He gave a body to Adam without a soul? Were you done with that verse, brother? No, sir. Go ahead and finish it. Which was the workmanship of thine hand, and didst breathe unto him the breath of life, mm -hmm. and he was made living before thee. You see that? So we see that Moses said he was a living soul. Paul said he was a living soul. But the writer of 2 Ezra said he was without a soul. Let's go hit 2 Corinthians 13, brother. 2 Corinthians 13, one verse right there, verse 1. One verse right there. 2 Corinthians 13 and 1. Read that, brother. This is the third time I am coming to you. Mm -hmm. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Do we see this, brothers and sisters? So we said, Moses said it and Paul said, but then we got this right over here in Ezra that disagreed with these brothers. So something is wrong with that writing, and let's go look at something right here in Ephesians chapter 2. Because we're going to look at some of these writings, but we're going to let the Bible prove itself up against this apocryphal book, okay? Second, uh, 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 Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians 2, and let's start at verse 13. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13, my brother. Go ahead and read that. But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Uh, now skip down, my brother. Hit that verse 18 and read it. For, th for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Uh huh. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. So now Paul is talking to the, the Gentiles, letting them know that through Jesus they now have access to eternal life. But go ahead and read, brother. And are built upon the foundations of the apostles. Okay, so look. So it says, this word is built upon the foundations of the apostles. Go ahead. And prophets. And the prophets. Go Je ahead. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So now we see who, who wrote this Bible, and we see that the word is based on the writings of the apostles, this prophet, the prophets, and Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And if you're writing something contrary to them, then I have to ask, does your book belong in this Bible? Right. I have to ask that question. So we just saw one writer in these lost books that contradicts what we see. So now, let's go to Acts chapter 10 and establish something else before we go back into this apocrypha. Acts chapter 10, and let's look at something Peter said right here. Acts 10. And we're going to hit verse 34. Let's start right there. Acts chapter 10 and verse 34. Acts 10 and 34. Go ahead and read it. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, 
of a truth i perceive that god is no respecter of persons uh-huh but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him so now let's go into the apocrypha the wisdom of solomon now we just read right here but look yeah that's good so look peter said in every nation the one that fear god and the one that work righteousness is accepted by god that's the one that's accepted okay so now let's go into the wisdom of solomon in this apocrypha and we're going to go to chapter 3 and we're going to start at verse 16 the wisdom of solomon chapter 3 verse 16 go ahead and read it as for the children of adulterers mm -hmm. they shall not come to their perfection mm -hmm. and the seed of an unrighteous bed shall be rooted out you see that so it starts off by saying if you were born because somebody was committing adultery, you have no shot at salvation. But Peter just told us that the one that feared God and worked righteousness, the Lord accept that person. Right. But in the wisdom of Solomon, it's looking like Solomon didn't have nothing to do with that right. right. Okay, but go ahead and read, brother. For Though they live long, uh -huh. yet shall they be nothing regarded. Okay. And their last age shall be without honor. Go ahead. Or if they die quickly, they have no hope. Mm -hmm. Neither comfort in the day of trial. You see that? So it says when they go before the Lord, when the day of trial, the white throne judgment, have you, they have no shot at salvation. But Peter said whoever is accepted and work righteousness they work righteousness and they fear God. That's who is accepted. So now let's go ahead Ezekiel chapter 18 and let's see if Ezekiel sounds like Peter or the wisdom of Solomon. Let's go and see Ezekiel 18 and verse 20, my brother. Ezekiel 18 and we are going to start at verse 20. Go ahead and read it. The soul that sent it. It shall die. So he said right here, the one that's sinning, that's the one that's going to die. Not the one that's born of, the, of that particular sinner. Go ahead and read. The son shall now bear the iniquity of the father. You see this, brothers and sisters? The son shall not bear the iniquity of his father. Go ahead and read. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the, of the son. Okay, so, so, so the father can't bear the iniquity of his son either, okay? So now, go ahead and read. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. So if you are a righteous person, your righteousness shall be upon you, and you will be accepted. Go ahead and read. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. So if a child is born because two people committed adultery, their wickedness is going to be on them if they don't repent and turn to the Lord right. and ask for that forgiveness and then start walking right after that. But that child has nothing to do with that. Okay, skip down, my brother. Hit that verse uh, 24. What'd that say? But when the righteous turn it away from... I'm, I'm sorry, hit that 23. I'm sorry, verse 23. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? Go ahead. Saith the Lord God, mm -hmm. and not that he should return from his ways and live? So the Lord was asking that question. He want the wicked to turn from their ways and live. He have no pleasure in them dying. They are his creation. However, if you choose not to turn, you are free agent, and that's on you. But the reason we went to Ezekiel, because we wanted to see if he sounded like the wisdom of Solomon right. or if he sounded like Peter. Let's go, hit, let's go hit Exodus 32 and see which one Moses sound like, because Ezekiel's writings sound like P what Peter had written, okay? Let's go and look at Exodus chapter 32. And then when we finish, you can answer the question yourself if these lost books belong with these 66. And you got people running around talking about some lost books, and they don't even know two of these 66 books. Right. Huh? Right. They won't even learn anything about this one. They just heard somebody say something, and then they're going to drop it in your lap. Right. Because it's like they want to look like they know something you don't know. They got the upper hand on you. You're not getting taught uh, the right way if these books are not included. Exodus. 32 and 31, brother. 32 and 31. Go ahead and read that. And Moses returned unto the Lord mm. and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin mm. and have made them gods of gold. Now, this is when they provoked and moved Aaron to making this gold calf and Israel worshiping this calf. So now Moses going to the Lord and said, These people have done a great sin and made themselves gods of gold. 
Go ahead and read, brother. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, block me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. So Moses said to the Lord, hey, if you don't forgive these people, he said, if, if you, he, he, Moses asked the Lord to forgive Israel, right? right? And he's saying, if you can't, then just blot me out of your book of life for their sake. So Moses saying, put it on me instead of them. Right. Now let's see what the Lord say. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto Moses, mm -hmm. whosoever has sinned against me, yes. him will I blot out of my book. You see this, brothers and sisters? Moses sound like Ezekiel, sound like Peter, sound like Ezekiel, sound like Moses. The wisdom of Solomon contradicts that. So you have to ask yourself the question, is the wisdom of Solomon a God-inspired book? Hmm. Okay? You have to ask that question and get the answer. So now, let's go to Philippians 2, my brother, and let's see if Paul sound like the wisdom of Solomon or these other three writers. Philippians chapter 2, we just want one verse. Verse 12, brother. Philippians 2 and 12, what does it say? Wherefore, my beloved, mm -hmm. as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence, presence only, but now much more in my absence. Mm -hmm. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So Paul don't sound like he's saying you don't have a shot. He said you got to work out your own salvation like everybody else. Right. If you were born some, from some adultery, that has nothing to do with that child, okay? Right. And that child does have a shot if they live a righteous life and is accepted by the Most High God. So now, we see that the wisdom of Solomon contradicts Peter, Ezekiel, Moses, and Paul. Right. We see that the writer of 2 Ezra contradicts Paul and, uh, in, in a couple of places, and he contradicts Moses. Right. Okay? So now, let's go look at something else. Let's go to Luke chapter 6. Does the Apocrypha belong with these 66 Bibles, these 66 books? That's the question we want to ask today. Luke chapter 6, and let's start at verse 30. Luke 6 and 30. Let's look at something else. Go ahead and read, brother. Give to every man that asks of thee, uh -huh. and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. So it says, give to everybody that needs your help. And then it says, if somebody takes some of your stuff, and don't want to give it back, don't go ask back for it. Okay. Go ahead and read, brother. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. He's saying, do unto others as you want them to do unto you, whoever it may be. Go ahead and read. For if ye love them which love you, what <laughs> thank have ye? He said, if you just going to love people that love you, what, what thank have you for that? Anybody can do that. Go ahead and read. For sinners also love those that love them. Y'all see that? He say a sinner love the people that love them. So ain't nothing special about just loving people that love you back. Right. Go ahead and read. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, mm -hmm. what thank have ye? Mm -hmm. For sinners also do even the same. Go ahead. And if ye lead them, oh, and if ye lead lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have you? Go ahead. For sinners also lend to sinners mm -hmm. to receive as much again. Go ahead. But love ye your enemies. He said, but love your enemies. Go ahead. And do good and lend hoping for, no hoping for nothing again. Go ahead. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Y'all see that? He said, the Lord is, is kind to the unthankful. And he's kind to the evil. Go ahead and read, brother. Be ye therefore merciful, as your father also is merciful. Go ahead. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. He said, judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Go ahead. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Go ahead. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. One more verse. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Mm -hmm. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over. Mm -hmm shall men give into your bosom. Mm -hmm. For with the same measure that you eat meat with all, with all, it shall be measured to you again. Okay, so we see right here that the Lord is telling us to give and help people. Now, let's go and it even mention the wicked and the evil, how the Lord gives to them and 
and take care of them too, right? So now let's go into the Apocrypha, into this book, Ecclesiasticus. Ecclesiasticus chapter 12. Ecclesiasticus 12, and we're going to read verses 4 through 7. 4 through 7. Go ahead and read it. Give to the godly man mm -hmm. and help not a sinner. Y'all see that right out the gate. It said only give to godly people. Don't help no sinners out. Go ahead and read. Do well unto him that is lowly, mm -hmm. but give not to the ungodly. Go ahead. Hold back thy bread and give it not unto him. You see that? He said if, if, a, if a wicked person is hungry, don't give him no bread. Don't help the sinners what the Apocrypha book is saying. Go ahead and read. Lest he overmaster thee there, thereby. Uh-huh. For else thou shalt receive twice as much evil for all the good thou shalt have done unto him. Go ahead. For the most high hated sinners. You see that? Did we we just read in Luke the opposite of that? Right. But we can also read in this Bible that the Lord don't love sinners. But we read that he'll still give to them, though, right. to give you room to turn. Because we read in Ezekiel, he don't have no pleasure in that any of the wicked should die, should die and perish. But go ahead and read, brother. And keep it them against the mighty day of their punishment. Go ahead. Give unto the good and help not the sinner. You see that? That's the reason I went here. He said, don't give anything to the sinner. This is what this book is saying. So now, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy 1, because we want to see who the Lord is, is who he's helping. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Ecclesiasticus out of this apocrypha said, don't help the sinner. Don't give them anything. This Bible say, it says, do good unto all men. Then it said, especially those of the household of faith. Okay. First Timothy 1, verse 15. What does it say, brother? This is a faithful saying mm -hmm. and worthy of all exception. Mm -hmm. uh, ex 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 acceptation. Acceptation. Uh -huh. Excuse me. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. To save who, brother? Sinners. Go ahead. Of whom I am chief. Go ahead. How big for this cause I obtain mercy. That in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now Paul said he's the chief sinner. All that all the stuff he did to the church. But he said, hey, Christ came into the world to save the sinners. And then we read in Luke 6 that he's kind to the evil. But in Ecclesiasticus, he said, don't give anything to a sinner. But let's go hit that Matthew chapter 9, brother. Matthew 9, and pick it up at verse 10. Matthew 9 and 10. And let's look at something here with Jesus. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 10. 9 and 10. Go ahead and read it. And it came to pass, as Jesus sat at meat in the house, mm -hmm. behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. Go ahead. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? So when the Pharisees saw Jesus sitting down eating with the publicans and sinners, of course, they went and asked the brothers, like, why is your master with them? Go ahead and read. But when Jesus heard that, he, sa he said unto them, they that be whole need not a position, mm -hmm. but they that are sick. He said the ones that are whole don't need the position. This is the ones that are sick. It's the ones that's living a life of sin. They need that position. Right. Okay, go ahead and read. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. Mm -hmm. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Go ahead. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So does anything we read out of this Bible in these last three places by Jesus, what Paul wrote in 1 Timothy, and what, uh, what we read in Luke, that the Lord is, is wants anybody to not help a sinner. Right. So this book we see raises questions about its validity, okay? And it, it, it shouldn't belong in this book, or should it belong in this book? But when we finish today, you'll be able to answer that question for yourself. Let's go 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14. Because so far, we see that 2 Ezra contradicts Moses and Paul. We see that the wisdom of Solomon contradicts Paul, Ezekiel, and Moses. 
And we see that Ecclesiasticus contradicts Jesus and Paul. So if those books were in here with these books, with the 66, wouldn't that be confusion? Yep. It would be confusion. Let's read uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and start at verse 29. 14 and 29, brother. What does it say? Let the prophet speak two or three mm -hmm. and let the others judge. Go ahead. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let, let the first hold his peace. Go ahead. For ye may all prophesy one by one. Prophesy. Prophes excuse me. For ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and all may comfort it. Comfort it. Comfort it. Go ahead. And the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So look, brothers and sisters, it says right here, the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. They're supposed to be writing the same thing. So if what if one of them is writing some uh, uh, opposite and contrary to what the rest of them are writing? Does this book go in here? Mm. Read that verse one more time, verse 32. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Go ahead. For God is not the author of confusion, mm -hmm. but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. So God is not the author of confusion. So we have to ask the question, does these books that have contrary writings in them belong with these 66 books? That's the question. So now, let's go into Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Ecclesi Ecclesiastes chapter 9, and let's look at something else. Because you can probably go in some of them books and find some stuff that's true in them. But once you start seeing the, the contrary writings, the lies, the fables, it will raise that question, does the book belong with these 66 books, okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 9, and let's start at verse 4. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 4. Go ahead and read it. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. Mm -hmm. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Go ahead. For the living know that they shall die. Yes. But the dead know not anything. Mm -hmm. Neither have they any more of a reward. Look, it said the dead don't know anything. They don't have any more reward. Go ahead and read. For the memory of them is forgotten. Go ahead. Also their love mm -hmm. and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Mm -hmm. Neither have they any more of a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. It said once you dead, that's it for you as far as this life. You have no more portion in anything that I do or this brother's doing if you are dead, okay? This is what uh, 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 Solomon had written here in Ecclesiastes. So now, let's go in Psalm 49 see what David say. The 49th Psalm, and we're going to pick it up at verse 6. The 49th Psalm and verse 6. And the, the title again is, Are the Lost Books and the Apocrypha God-Inspired Books? Did God inspire them to write these books? Psalm 49 and verse 6. 49 and 6. Go ahead and read. They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, mm -hmm. none of them can by any means redeem his brother, okay. nor give to God a ransom for him. So look, it says if you have money and wealth, you can't ransom your brother from God. If God's going to deal harshly with him, there's nothing you can do. If he's going to put him in the fire, there's nothing you can do. And we've already read in, in uh, Ecclesiastes that once a person is dead, they have no more reward in anything that's done on this earth by anybody, okay? So now, let's go back into the Apocrypha. Let's go back in here to 2 Maccabees, chapter 12. 2 Maccabees, chapter 12, and we're going to start at verse 41. And we've read, you can't ransom your brother, okay? And once you're dead, that's it. Go ahead and read. All men, therefore, praising the Lord, mm -hmm. the righteous judge, mm -hmm. who had opened the things that were hid, mm -hmm. betook themselves unto prayer yes. and besought him that the sin committed might wholly be put out of remembrance. Go ahead. Besides that noble Judas mm -hmm. ex exhorted 
the people to keep themselves from sin. Mm -hmm. For so much as they saw before their eyes the things that came to pass for the sins of those that were slain. Uh huh. So now we got so we got some dead people who died sinners. Okay. Go ahead and read. And when he had made a gathering throughout the company mm -hmm. to the sum of two thousand drams of mm -hmm. silver, he sent it to Jerusalem to offer a sin offering. So look, so they collected what today is about seven thousand dollars worth of silver and sent it to Jerusalem so they could ransom some dead sinners. Okay, go ahead and read. Doing therein very well and honestly that he was mindful of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. For if he had not hope that they were slain should have risen again, mm -hmm. it had been superfluous and vain to pray for the dead. Mm -hmm. And also in that he perceived that there was a great favor laid up for those that died godly. Okay. And it was an holy and good thought. Whereupon he made a reconciliation for the dead that they might be delivered from sin. You see that? They died sinners, and he collected $7,000 worth of silver that's in today's value and sent it to Jerusalem to save these dead sinners, to have them redeemed. Have we seen anything like this in this Bible? No. We ain't read nothing like this in this book. David told us you can't ransom your brother. Solomon told us the wisest man ever lived. He said that the dead have no more reward that of anything that's done under the sun. So there's nothing you can do for a dead sinner. But these guys collected some money to ransom some dead sinners, okay? So now, let's go back to Ezekiel 18. We went here earlier. Let's go back to it. Ezekiel 18, let's start at verse 21 this time. Ezekiel 18 and 21. Because we see that the writer of Maccabees have put something in there that's contrary to what Solomon and David is writing. Ezekiel 18, my brother. We're going to start at verse 21. 18 and 21. Go ahead and read that. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he have committed mm -hmm. and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, mm -hmm. he shall surely live. Mm -hmm. He sh shall not die. So now if a wicked person return to the Lord and live a lawful and righteous life, he won't die that second death, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead and read. All his transgressions that he had committed. All that person's sins that they committed, whether they was for 50 or 60 years, go ahead and read. They shall not be mentioned unto him. They won't even be mentioned. That's your hope right there. Skip down, my brother. Hit that verse 24. But when the righteous turneth away from, from his righteousness and committed iniquity mm -hmm. and do it accordingly to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, mm -hmm. shall he live? Mm-hmm. All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned. Mm -hmm. And his trespass that he hath trespassed, and in his sin that he hath sinned, and then shall he die. We talking the second death. So it don't matter how much money that somebody collect for a dead sinner and send to Jerusalem, you are not going to be able to ransom that individual. Skip down, my brother, and hit that verse, uh, verse 30. What that say? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, mm -hmm. everyone according to his ways. Everyone according to his ways, not about how much somebody collected for you. Go ahead and read. Saith the Lord God. Uh huh. Repent and turn yourself from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be in your shall not be your ruin. Because if you die in your sin, hey, that is going to be your ruin. Go ahead and read. Cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed mm -hmm. and make you a new heart and a new spirit. And make you a new mind, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? One more verse. For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, turn yourself and, li and live ye. Look here, so the Lord say, turn and live. That's the only way you're going to live, if you turn and live. If you die, if you die in sin, you know, it doesn't matter how much. They could collect 77000 in silver for you. You can't ransom a dead sinner. But according to this writer in 2 Maccabees, they did it. Right. Okay? But that's, con that's contradictions to the writings of Solomon, David, and Ezekiel. 
So does this writer, is his book God inspired? Does it belong with these 66? That's the question. So let's look at something else. Let's go to Daniel chapter 6. And Daniel, if Daniel is telling us about Daniel right here. Daniel chapter 6 and verse 1. Because who is, who is the best person to tell you about Daniel? Daniel is. Okay? So let's see what Daniel said about what happened to him. Daniel chapter 6, verse 1. Go ahead and read. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes. Go which, ahead. Which should be over the whole kingdom. Mm -hmm. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give account unto them, mm -hmm. and the king shall have no damage. Go ahead. Then Daniel, then this Daniel was preferred above the president mm -hmm. and princes because an excellent spirit was in him, mm -hmm. and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. So look, so the King Darius set Daniel over a lot of his kingdom, okay? And let's skip down to verse 11. And there were other people that was part of that kingdom that did not like that, okay? Verse 11, go ahead and read it. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Because these men gathered up and talked the king into making a decree that if you worship any other God or pray to any other being for anything for a certain amount of time, uh, you're going to be cast into the, lion, uh, uh, the lion's den. And David was, uh, Daniel was like, skip that. I'm still going to pray to the God of Israel. And they called him because they knew he was going to do that. So that's why they made it up. And but the king went along with them and made the decree, which we know decrees can't be taken back. So they went and told. Let's see what happened. Verse 14. Go ahead and read it. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself. He wasn't displeased with Daniel. He was displeased with himself that he made that because he knew Daniel dealt with his God seriously. Yeah. Go ahead and read. And set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. Mm -hmm. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Go ahead. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, No, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king established may be changed. Go ahead. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Yes. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. So the king told Daniel, I'm going to put you in there. But your God is going to deliver you, okay? That's what the king told Daniel. So now, let's see what happens. Skip down uh, uh, to verse 18 and read it. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. How, how, how much time did he pass fasting? The night. The night. Y'all see that? It said he passed the night fasting. Go ahead and read. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Go ahead. Then the king arose very early in the morning. So he rose up the next morning after a night of fasting. Go ahead. And went in haste unto the den of lions. And he went to the den of lions. Go ahead and read. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable uh -huh. voice unto Daniel. Mm -hmm. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, mm -hmm. is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? So he asked Daniel. He called for him and said, Was your God, the God of Israel, able to deliver you from these lions? Go ahead and read. Then said Daniel unto the king, mm -hmm. O king, live forever. Mm -hmm. My God has sent his angel yes. and has shut the lion's mouth, mm -hmm. that they have no hurt, <coughs> excuse me, that they have not hurt me. Mm -hmm. For as much as before him innocent, innocency was found in me, mm -hmm. and also before thee, O king. Have I done no hurt? Go ahead. Then was the king exceedingly, exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. Mm -hmm. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him mm -hmm. because he believed in his God. He believed in his God. So according to what we read, how long was Daniel in that lion's den? The night. How long, y'all? The night. One night, right? Now let's go into the apocrypha to the history of Baal and the dragon. The history of Baal and the dragon, and this is just one chapter in this book. So look, we're going to start at verse 29, brother. 29. Go ahead and read it. So they came to the king and said, Deliver us, Daniel, or else we will destroy thee and thine house. Mm -hmm. 
Now when the king saw that they pressed him sore, being constrained, he delivered Daniel unto them. Go ahead. Who cast him into the lion's den, mm -hmm. where he was six days. How long, brother? Six days. Daniel wrote something else, didn't he? Yep. Go ahead and read. And in the den, there were seven lions, and they had given them every day two carcasses mm -hmm. and two sheep, mm -hmm. which then were not given to them. Okay. So it said they prepared the lions that the usual food they were getting, they didn't get it. So by the time they put Daniel in there, the lions would be real hungry. Go ahead and read, brother. Which they were not given to them, mm -hmm. to the intent that they might devour Daniel. Go ahead. Now, there was in Jewry a prophet called Habakkuk, mm -hmm. who had made pottage and, and had broken bread in a bowl and was going into the field for to bring it to the reapers. Go ahead. But the angel of the Lord said unto Habakkuk, mm -hmm. Go, carry the dinner that thou hast unto Babylon unto Daniel, who is in the lion's den. Okay, so now... Daniel didn't tell us nothing about Habakkuk coming up there feeding him. And Habakkuk, in his book, didn't tell us nothing about going up to Babylon. And I don't know if you got some dinner, I don't know how you're going to walk from Jerusalem up to what is current day uh, 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 Iraq, Iran area. How you going to walk up there with a dinner? Right. I don't care if it's <laughs> church's chicken. It ain't going to be no good by the time you get there walking right. or riding a horse. Go ahead and read. And Habakkuk said, mm -hmm. Lord, I never saw Babylon, mm -hmm. neither do I know where the den is. Go ahead. Then the angel of the Lord took him by the crown and bare him by the hairs of his head. So it said the angel grabbed Habakkuk by his hair. Go ahead and read. And through the vehemency of his spirit set him in Babylon over the den. Go ahead. And Habakkuk cried, saying, O Daniel, Daniel, take the dinner which God has sent thee. Mm -hmm. And Daniel said, Thou hast remembered me, O God, neither hast thou forsaken them that seek thee and love thee. Mm -hmm. So Daniel arose and did eat, and the angel of the Lord set Habakkuk in his own place again immediately. Mm -hmm. Upon the seventh day, the king went to the... How many on what day, brother? The seventh day. Go ahead and read. The king went to be well, Daniel, and when he came to the den, he looked in, and behold, Daniel was sitting. So... That's it. That's it. So look, y'all. This book that's in the Apocrypha, they call it a lost book. I don't know how it's lost and you got it. Because to me, if I lost my keys, then I don't have them right now. But this thing says he was in there for six days, then somewhere else on the seventh day, okay? Daniel said he was in there one night. So this writer is contradicting Daniel. We keep seeing writings in this book that contradict these other 66 that we have. So we should be starting to get some answers as to are the question, are these books God-inspired books? Let's go to Matthew chapter 9. Let's look at something else. We got these, this one and one more thing to hit in this apocrypha to just put that question out there where you can answer it for yourself. Matthew 19, let's start at verse 3. Matthew chapter 19, and this is Jesus now, 19 and 3. Go ahead and read it, brother. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, mm -hmm. Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? So look, so they asked him, Is it rightful for a man, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for any reason? Go ahead and read. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Mm -hmm. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, mm -hmm. and they twain shall be one flesh. He said, In the beginning I said man and wife going to become one flesh. So how are you going to leave part of your flesh? How is a man going to walk out of a room and leave a rib in the room? Huh? Right. Go ahead and read. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. Mm -hmm. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Go ahead. They say, they say unto him, why did Moses then command it to give a writing of divorcement mm -hmm. and to put her away? Go ahead. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. Mm -hmm. But from the beginning, 
it was not so. So Jesus said from the beginning, the divorce was not so. From the beginning, now this is Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, God in the flesh. He said from the beginning, the divorce was not so. Okay, but they asked him, why did Moses give them that? And he said because of the mistreatment that what the brothers were doing to the sisters. So he just kind of winked at that. Go ahead and continue, brother. And I say unto you, mm -hmm. whosoever shall put his wife, except it be for No, 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 start that over. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife. He says, so whosoever divorce his wife, go ahead, brother. Except it be for fornication. Except it be for fornication. That means she committed adultery on him with somebody else. He say, if it's for any reason other than that, go ahead and read. And shall marry another uh -huh. committed adultery. Yes, sir. And, so, and whosoever married her, which is put away, do it committed adultery. Do okay. it commit adultery. Excuse me. Does commit adultery. Does. But look, brothers and sisters, Jesus said that's the only reason you got. Y'all see that, right? That's the only reason you have to do it. But now let's go into the Apocrypha, into Ecclesiasticus, and let's see if this book match what Jesus just said. Ecclesiastes 25, Ecclesiasticus chapter 25, because Jesus gave us that reason, and he said there's only one reason, because they, they asked him, can he do it for any cause? And Jesus gave them the one cause in which he can do it. Now, Ecclesiasticus chapter 25, let's pick it up at verse 22. Verse 22, then we're going to skip to 26. What that say, brother? A woman. If she maintain her husband is full of anger, mm -hmm. imprudent, and, a, and much reproach. Go ahead. A wicked woman abateth the cover, courage, making a heavy countenance and a wounded heart. A woman that will no, not. No, no, no. Skip down to 26, oh. brother. Excuse me. If she go not as thou wouldest have her, mm -hmm. cut her off from thy flesh. Wait a minute. Start that verse over again, brother. If she go not as thou wouldest have her, mm -hmm. cut her off from thy flesh uh -huh. and give her a bill of divorce. So it says right here in this book, which is contrary to what Jesus said, if your wife don't do everything you tell her to do, put her away and divorce her. Start that verse over again, brother. If she go not as thou wouldest have her, mm -hmm. cut her off from thy flesh mm -hmm. and give her a bill of divorce and let her go. If, if we could get divorced for those reasons right there, you wouldn't find a marriage last two days. Huh? Right. But according to this apocrypha, right. it doesn't match what Jesus said. So we already see that Ecclesiasticus is contrary to the writings and the sayings of Jesus. So now, let's go into 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And let's see if Paul sound like Jesus or if he sound like the writer of Ecclesiasticus. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, my brother. Let's start at verse 10. 1 Corinthians 7 and, uh, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 7 and verse 10. Go ahead and read it. And unto the married I commanded, mm -hmm. yet not I, but the Lord. He said, the Lord is telling you this. If you're married, go ahead. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Go ahead. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried mm -hmm. or become reconciled to, reconciled. Her, reconciled to her husband. Uh-huh. And let not the husband put away his wife. And let not the husband put away his wife. And Jesus already gave him the one reason he can do it. And it can't be because she don't follow his, his instructions. Right. Okay? Right. So we have to ask ourselves, does that book belong in the Bible? So now let's go look at something else. Uh, uh, let's go into, let's go into uh, Tobit chapter 6, brother. Tobit oh. 6, because we see here that Ecclesiasticus contradicts Jesus and Paul. And you can go read in Malachi where he said the Lord hates divorce. Right. So he contradicts Malachi too. So how can it belong in this book? when it would give off the confusion that the book is contradicting itself everywhere you go, okay? Tobit 6, and let's start at verse 1. 6 and 1, go ahead and read it. 
And as they went on their journey, mm -hmm. they came in the evening to the river, yes. to Tigris, and they lodged there. Go ahead. Now, that's, now according to the writer of Tobit, it's a man and his angel. They going on this journey. Go ahead and read. And when the young man went down to wash himself, mm -hmm. a fish leaped out of the river and would have devoured him. Uh -huh. Then the angel said unto him, take the fish. And the young man laid hold of the fish and drew it to land. Go ahead. To whom the angel said, open the fish and take the heart and the liver and the gall and put them up safely. So look, so the angel told that man, get a three piece out that fish. Get the heart, <laughs> get the liver and get the gall and put it up for safekeeping. Go ahead and read, brother. So the young man did as the angel commanded him. Mm -hmm. And when they had roasted the fish, mm -hmm. they did eat it. Go ahead. Then they both went on their way mm -hmm. till they drew near to Escobain. Go ahead. Then the young man said to the angel, Brother Azarius. So the angel, clearly his name is Azarius. Go ahead. To what use is the heart and the liver to the gall of the fish? No, and the gall. And the gall uh -huh. of the fish. And he said unto him, Touching the heart and the liver, if a devil or an evil spirit trouble any. He said, okay, as far as that, that liver and that heart, if an evil spirit trouble you, young man, go ahead and read. We must make a smoke thereof before the man or the woman, mm -hmm. and the party shall be no more vet. He should be no more vet. So he said, make a smoke, right? So now, skip down and hit that verse 16, brother. Verse 16, what did it say? And when thou shalt come into the, into the marriage chamber, thou shalt take the ashes of perfume and shall lay upon them some of the heart and liver of the fish so hold on start that over brother okay and when thou shalt come into the marriage chamber thou shalt take the ashes of perfume and shall lay upon them some of the heart and liver of the fish mm -hmm. and shall make a smoke with it he said so when you get married he said you come into your marriage chamber he said you take some ashes of perfume and, and, and lay it up on the heart and the liver of that fish and then make a smoke with it. That's what you're going to do with the heart and the liver. Go ahead and read. And the devil shall smell and it. And then the devil going to smell that smoke. Go ahead. And flee away. And he's going to run away from you. Go ahead. And never come again. And anymore. never bother you again. <laughs> that sounds crazy. <laughs> he's going to never bother you again. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Anymore. Uh-huh. But when thou shalt come to her, rise up both of you mm -hmm. and pray to God, which is merciful. So look, so now, according to the right of Tobit, we can get a fish liver, right? fish heart, get some perfume ashes, put it on the smoke, and the devil will never bother us ever again. As they say, my, my, my. Right. Huh? But look, let's go and see if somebody in the Bible can agree with this right. Let's go to James chapter 4. We just want one verse right here. James 4 and 7. James chapter 4. One verse right here. Verse 7. Because out of that three piece, we should take two of them and make that smoke. <laughs> Right. Okay. Because if that really worked, we can just go right here out to the sidewalk and do that and just be done with that. Right. James 4 and 7. Go ahead and read it. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Mm -hmm. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So, so he, James, say, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. This guy, say, this guy say, make the smoke. Right. James say, resist him. So somebody may be saying, how do you do that? How do you do that? Let's see. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6. And we just have a, a few more spots out there, about three or four more. Ephesians 6. And let's pick it up at verse 11. Because James said, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. But some of us sitting in this room or watching, we may not know how to do that. We're going to find out how to do it. Okay. 
Ephesians 6 and 11. Go ahead and read it, brother. Put on the whole armor of God mm -hmm. that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Go ahead. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the dark, against rulers of the darkness of the, this world, mm -hmm. against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Take up what, brother? The whole armor of God. Again, he said, put on the whole armor of God. Go ahead. That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. That you will be able to withstand. Go ahead. And having done all to stand. Go ahead. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Yes. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Having on that, bless, that breastplate of righteousness. Go ahead. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Go ahead. Above all, taking the shield of faith, mm -hmm. wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the, the wicked. Fiery darts. fiery darts of the wicked. Go ahead. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Take the sword of the spirit, which is that word of God. In other words, like he said, put on that whole armor, brothers and sisters. But let's go show you an example. Let's go show you something that Jesus did. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew 4, because when that devil come, all you got to do is just spit some verses at him. Right. Get your book out. Right. Just get your book out and go to read. Well, imagine the Lord setting a bomb off in your house. That'll turn you away from the devil. Get your mind right, and then he, he won't have no choice but to leave you because you're not going to go and do that thing you shouldn't do or think or say. Shake it off. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Go ahead and read it. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Go ahead. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward in hunger. Mm -hmm. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, Command that these stones be made bread. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Go ahead. Then the devil taken him up into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple uh -huh. and said unto, unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast down, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. Mm -hmm. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time dash thy foot against a stone. He said, go ahead and read. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, mm -hmm. thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Uh huh. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain and showeth him, showeth him all the kingdoms of, this, of the world uh -huh. and the glory of them. And said unto him, all these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Go ahead. Then say, saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, mm -hmm. for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So you see right here, uh, 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 Jesus hit him three times with something that's already written in his Bible. The right. first time he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. He hit him with that verse. Then in verse 7, he hit him. It is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Yes, sir. Then he hit him in his last place. He said, it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And let's read verse 11 and see what Satan did after that. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. He was gone. Just hit him with some verses. <laughs> huh? Y'all right. see how easy that is? Right. Hit him with some verses. Just hit him with some. James, go ahead and take that money. Ain't nobody going to keep it. <laughs> it is written, thou shalt not steal. Right. And he's gone. You see what I'm saying? Right. That's all you got to do. Put on that whole armor, brothers and sisters. Not get a fish heart and a fish liver and put some perfume ash, perfume ash on it and smoke it. <coughs> And he going to leave you forever? Forever, ever? Forever, ever. Right. So look, the writer of this book told me, he contradicted James and Jesus and Paul. Right. He contradicted these guys. 
And you have to ask this question too. If I was to accept that the apocryphal books, these lost books belong with these 66, I'm also saying that God isn't powerful enough to have his book like he wanted. Right. Man stole something out of his book. I would have to admit that. Then I would be contradicting some Bible. Let's go to Revelation 19. I'd be contradicting something myself if I said that. Right. Revelation 19, my brother. Let's pick it up at verse 5. Revelation 19 and 5. If I was to say they actually do belong in here, but we're just asking the question. We won't let you decide. Revelation 19 and 5. Go ahead and read it, brother. And a voice came out of the throne mm -hmm. saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, mm -hmm. and, and ye that fear him, both small and great. Go ahead. And I have and I heard as it were were the voice of a great multitude, mm -hmm. and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, mm -hmm. for the Lord God omnipotent, omnipotent reigneth. Y'all see that word omnipotent? That's me. Mean, that means unlimited power. So if I'm going to say to you, somebody down here took some books out and God wanted them in here, then I'm saying he's not omnipotent. Right. Because he couldn't even keep his book together. So now, let's go to John 5 because we read early in this lesson that this thing is based on, the, it, it's founded on the apostles, the prophets, with Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone. Didn't we read that? Then we read that the writers in some of these books we read in the Apocrypha, they contradicted David, Solomon, Daniel, right. Paul, Peter, Jesus, James, Ezekiel, and Moses. You contradicted all these writers that we revere and we believe their writings, but you contradict these guys. And you contradicted Moses? Let's go read John 5 and 45, and let's see what Jesus said about you if you have a problem with Moses' writings, okay? John 5 and 45. Go ahead and read it, brother. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. Mm -hmm. There is one that accuseth you, mm -hmm. even Moses, in whom ye trust. Go ahead. For had ye believed Moses, mm -hmm. ye would have believed me. Go ahead. For he wrote of me. You see what Jesus says? If you believe Moses, you will believe me because he wrote of me. Go ahead and read. But if ye believe not his writings. But if you don't believe Moses' writings. How shall ye believe my words? Do y'all see that? But those writers in there contradict Moses in the Apocrypha and the Lost Books. So do they belong in this book? That's no. the question you have to answer. No, sir. Are they God-inspired books? No, sir. So look, last place. Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18. We just want one verse right here. 22. Deuteronomy 18 and 22. Deuteronomy chapter 18. This is our last verse. Verse 22, 18 and 22. Go ahead and read it, brother. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing, excuse me, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. Do y'all see that? If they write something in the name of the Lord and that thing don't come to pass, the Lord didn't speak that to that person, nor did he inspire that person to write that. Go ahead and read. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously so look so that prophet did it presumptuously go ahead and read thou shall not be afraid of him and don't even listen to him as a matter of fact so we see in today's lesson brothers and sisters are the lost books and apocrypha god inspired books so a question that came up is was adam without a soul because they wrote that in that book right. does the bible say adam was without a soul y'all It says a child born as a result of somebody committing adultery has no hope. Is that true, y'all? Not at all. So it, asks, it says here, should we help a sinner? The Bible said don't help. I mean, the Bible says help them. The apocryphal say don't give them nothing. Right. 
How long did Daniel say he was in that lion's den? One, one night. One night. But the apocryphal say six, six seven days. Then it said on the seventh day. Right. Okay. Can a man divorce his wife for disobedience to him? No. Not, Not according to the Bible. But the apocryphal say he can. Can the smoke of a heart of a fish and the liver with some perfume ashes make the devil flee from you and never come back? Absolutely not. So you should be able to answer the question for yourself, brothers and sisters, because we read today that the prophets are subject to the prophets and that the spirit of Christ was in the writers of this Bible and all scriptures was inspired by God. And it was the whole thing was built up on the prophets, the apostles, with Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. And when you got some books out here and the writers contradict Jesus and the apostles and the prophets, then is there a way that these books are God inspired? You can answer that for yourself. I hope somebody was edified with today's lesson and I thank you for your time.